Hi and welcome to this new video series which I'll call Deep Dark Ross. In this video series I'm going to talk about uh, very specific topics that refer to things that are really necessary in ROS that you will use for sure in your programs and your robots but that the examples that there are are non-existent or just are not realistic so they don't use these examples in classes they don't use them um, with other systems that could interfere so I'll try to give very basic but realistic examples on how to use them. So in this case, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, a topic that um, it's really necessary and that if you use Python, probably you won't have to deal with it for a long time. But with C++, you'll have to deal with it just using topics which is the basis of ROS, so, which is threading. So callbacks in C++ are difficult to understand how it works and how to manage them. And I'll give you here an example of having two subscribers that interfere with, with one another. So let's, let's have a look. So you have the ROS check in the video description you'll be able to do exactly the same thing that I'm doing here and I've written down here some basic indications. So the first of all we need a, a, a robot, a simulation in this case. So I'm going to use the boxbot uh, robot that I've used in other examples but basically because it's simple and uh, clear what's happening here. So. Here we have an empty simulation with our box bot, which is a two-wheel robot with a camera and an IMU and some odometry. So very basic ro robot. And in reality, you'll have more or less the same configuration, just with other uh, morphology. So here we have it. So let's have a look at the code. So let me put myself here a little smaller there you go and let me go close all this stuff and we can go step by step okay so first thing is that I've created um, a git which is called the dark uh, Ross series git that you'll have in the video description and you can download this same code so here Let's create a, a subscriber to two topics. So here we have in a class. This is very important because doing myself examples, the examples normally don't use classes. And if you're doing a very small project, it's OK. But not using classes, objects, this kind of stuff, it gets old really fast. And I wanted to give you uh, basic basic class with some functions there and some variables that are initialized some place and because that way you'll have a realistic example of what you should know to start with ROS uh, in C++. Uh, here we have uh, our main function and essentially here we are initializing ROS, the, our node and then we are starting the class. We are creating the class object and then we are ROS spinning, which means that it, it stays there forever until you close the, the program. So in the, in the constructor, we have two subscribers with their own callbacks. As you can see, it's inside this class, which we define in this uh, dot h here which we have here it's very simple but it's the basis so here we initialize the class which is called thread example class and we made as public uh, the constructor and the destructor simple okay and then we have as private we have the node handler which is 
the the object that has all related with Ross uh, and then we have the subscribers the two subscribers that we initialize here and then we uh, declare here the two um, functions so IMU callback and autumn callback which they have type IMU from sensor messages and this one has autometry nav messages yep okay once we have the constructor when we when we do this what we're doing is calling the constructor which is here and calling this which is called automatically what we have here is we are initializing node handle so the ROS all the ROS API and all that stuff here before getting inside once we are inside we are using this which was declared already here so we say hey node handle is type ROS node handle and here we initialize it and then we use it to initialize the subscribers which are two which uh, are subscribed to this topic and this one so an IMU and odometry okay we have a queue of 10 so we will start rejecting new topics after having 10 okay so the oldest the, the newest 10 will we will have them there which have some has some consequences um, and here we have the, the callback which is IMU callback and here we have the odometry callback which is the function that will be called each time that we receive a message and we have to put this so that it knows that we are calling this callback the callback of this function otherwise it doesn't work okay so bear that in mind and that's it very simple inside the callbacks we uh, get the message so in the IMU we get from the message here the pointer we get the angular velocity the x and y components and then we print it okay and then in the odometry we do the same thing but with the position so x and y in the plane and we print it this would be used for example to make some calculations for navigation for um, ai training a lot of stuff yeah it's uh, as i said this is the basis but we're going to see that changing very little can get very strange okay so let's execute it and see what happens so first things first we go here and uh yeah we go here and we compile it get can make okay we had it already compiled and now we do ROS launch uh, cpp uh, thread I think examples and then we have thread example dot launch okay there we go and uh, just to explain what it is we have this launch which is this one and we're launching the the binary that has been compiled how we are compiling it we go to CMake list and we see how this is compiled to compile any program in C++ in ROS you need to declare the dependencies so in this case sensor messages and nav messages that we are using in the odometry and the IMU and uh, the same thing in the CatKit package to find it and then we declare here this is important because we are saying please include the include folder which is here okay with the name CPP threads examples very important then here we are generating the binary and installing so here we are declaring threads example that's the name of the binary and we're compiling this and it needs these libraries these libraries and that's it and then with the install okay okay once we have it let's launch it and see what happens it initializes and as you can see it's getting all the data from the, the topics Fantastic, so why do we need threading? Why do we need asynchronous threading and all that stuff? 
okay this is in the uh, the best scenario so in the callbacks you don't have to do any processing it, it doesn't go slow nothing so that's okay for you but what happens if in one of the callbacks which is quite normal that in a callback you process some stuff and you take time but you need the data from other callbacks have to keep on working to get other data to do other processing to publish other stuff this is very normal in ROS so what happens for example what if we put a sleep of five seconds which simulates um, having to process the, the speed, the velocities of the IMU because we are doing, I don't know, deep, uh, deep learning or I don't know what. So what happens then? What happens if one of the callbacks takes five seconds to do its work? You would think, okay, then, well, that takes some um, amount of time, and, but the other one keeps on working. Well, you're wrong because this ROS spy spin which is the one that processes all the callbacks is single threaded that means that when one callback we have imagine that you have the IMU callback and the odometry callback then he goes hmm I have to process this one okay I process five seconds and then okay now next callback oh maybe it came this one first another one of the IMU callback I have to process this one maybe I have a stack of 20 of them that I've that because it's publishing all the time it's calling all the time it's a mess you'll see right now what happens if we use that one so um, we have the IMU slow Remember, I haven't changed the simulation. Out of the bat, you see that it's not working. Absolutely, it's not working whatsoever because it's processing, it's not doing it in order. So it processes two times the velocity, then one of the position, then the velocity. So you see that one callback is affecting the others, which is catastrophic. As you can see, there's no, there's no pattern just because it depends on how the callbacks come in. So here you process three and two, then three, then, I mean, it depends and you don't have control. So that's not good. So what do we have to do? Here comes the asynchronous. Uh, let me give you the example here. Um, and let me close this because we don't need it anymore. Whoops, sorry. So this one, we've changed some, some parts. Here, we don't have the spin. We have the ROS wait for shutdown. Okay, then who does the processing of the callbacks? Good question there. Uh, for that, let's go to the age. I, I created a new age for this one. And you can see that I've created this new ROS async spinner. This was rec not recently added, but it's not something that had ROS from the beginning. So it's relatively new. Um, this, what allows us to do is to assign a number of threads to our program and make it available for our program to process different callbacks. So it, it sounds that it might fix the issue. So where are we initializing it? Well, we are initializing in the same place that we initialized the node handle, you see? Node handle and then we do spinner. And the number here depends on the threads that you want to assign to your program. In this case, zero means every, every core that you have, every thread that you have available in your system 
you have it for that. So if you need in this program 20, it will get 20 if, if it has, if your computer has. So in our case here, we have loads of threads um, just because we are in the cloud. So let me, if I do htop, whoops. As you can see, we have um, uh, uh, 16 threads. So we have more than enough. Okay. So we initialize it that, and then we say spinner start. We have to put this. If we don't put it, we don't start. We, it, it won't work. And magically, the callbacks are assigned to those threads. That means that if my odometry doesn't have any delay, it will go try to go at the rate that it's published, okay? While the IMU, which is very slow, it will publish at the rate, it will be processed at the rate that it can. So let's have a look how it works. Um, so now we have this sync launch and as you can see the odometry is being published at um, an acceptable rate and the velocity you see it published one there well it, it didn't publish it's publishing all the time but it's processing the callbacks of odometry at an acceptable rate but the velocity is processed at the rate that it can be processed because it's, it has a delay of five seconds. This means that I now have the ability to have an updated values of odometry and they are not affected by mm, the speed. So let me, uh, the speed of another callback, for example, let me turn my robot around and let's move it in the in this direction so as you can see the the odometry is increasing there you go so it's moving more or less in the in the x this is the red line so the x dimension so you can see that it's increasing negatively in, in the X and the Y also because it's moving more or less diagonally. But it's working. So more or less if I stop, uh, let me stop it. Stop. There we go. So more or less we see that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Uh, yeah, more or less would say seven meters. Yeah, more or less like 6.6. .6. So its work is updated while the speed goes at whatever it can go. And that's it. So this is, uh, it was a short video on, but I hope that it was educational and clear on how to use asynchronous threads in C++, why you need them, why you need to follow the example, this example with classes and so on, because otherwise you won't be able to use it in anything that it's serious. And that's it. So thanks a lot and see you in the next video. Peace.